Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're gonna be going over 10 tips and tricks for every brand new Steam Deck owner. So, if you're brand new to the Steam Deck, or maybe you're still waiting for yours to come in the mail, this is the video for you. So let's get right into it. If you don't wanna sit through the entire video, I totally understand if you got lives and you got things to do, I'll have timestamps in the scrub bar below. If there's a specific tip or trick you're looking for specifically, that is the place to find it and go to it at your free will. But starting out at number one, the first thing you want to learn is the shortcuts. And by default, Steam is very, very nice at giving us some really cool shortcuts right off the bat. So within game mode here, if you hold down the Steam button, it'll actually give you a list of different shortcuts right off the bat. So you can actually, if you have a controller like I do right now, connected via Bluetooth, hitting Steam and Triangle will actually turn off your controller to save battery life. You can force a game to shut down, show the keyboard ready to go. So if you're typing in something and the keyboard's not popping up automatically, which by the way, quick hint, it happens a lot. Just hit Steam and Square and boom, the keyboard will show up right away. Well, in reality, Square is actually X. I'm not sure why it's showing the PlayStation controls, but that might be because I have this connected. But normally uh, it'll have these controls set up automatically. So it'll be Steam and X and you will get the keyboard to show up right away. Same with the quick access menu, toggle magnifier, take screenshots. All of that is very, very good to know. So definitely keep these in your memory and just kind of use them from time to time to get them stuck in your head so you don't have to look at this menu every single time. The next big thing to learn is the desktop mode. So if we go to the settings, we go down to power, and we go down to switch to desktop, it'll switch us over. It's kind of funny that it's a little bit hidden in a way to find the desktop mode. I'm not gonna lie, when I first got my Steam Deck, I had to look it up. How do I get to the desktop mode? I know it's there, but I cannot figure it out. Hopefully sometime down the road, they might add an actual launcher within your Steam library, but it is what it is for right now. At least now you know where to find it. And from here, we have a ton of different amazing things we can do. And it's literally a full-blown desktop. So from here, you can download applications at your liking with a full-blown internet browser. I have Firefox enabled, but you can download any web browser of your liking. As you can see, I was checking out some ROMs for my emulator. Uh, probably shouldn't be showing that on YouTube. Don't don't tell on me. Uh, but yeah, it's a full-blown web browser. So you can watch YouTube videos on here. You can watch Netflix. You can download programs, the whole shebang. It's pretty awesome. And this is running on Linux, it's not Windows, so you will find from time to time some programs you might download that'll be Windows only, and they won't work properly. So you gotta make sure you're downloading a Linux-based application so that it'll work without a hitch, like the Linux version of Spotify and Discord I had to download, and they work without an issue. The cool thing was as well, I actually found these by going down to the little Discover area. So in here, we can actually look for Linux-based applications that are perfectly already optimized for the Steam Deck. So just by going up into the search area here, hit the Steam and X buttons, like I stated before, we get up that keyboard and you can type in something like Spotify and we'll get the keyboard to go away. And as you can see, Spotify is right here and you can download it straight from there. You don't have to actually go and look it up online or through the internet browser. It's all right in the discover area. Pretty amazing. And that will go for a lot of different things, such as maybe if you want to emulate from time to time, wink, wink, that is where you'd find that as well. So the desktop is just like any other desktop you'd see on a computer. You also have your folder system, so you can go through here and look at your documents, your downloads, and really anything inside of the Steam Deck or within your SD card. So I do have a 500 gig SD card plugged in as well as this is the 512 gigabyte model of Steam Deck. So if I wanted to look at what's inside the Steam Deck or within the SD card, you can do that on separate pages, just like you could like in Windows. So pretty amazing. The desktop mode is definitely something you don't want to just disregard. You should come in here from time to time. And I'll get more into this in a little bit with my 10th tip and trick. For my third tip, we're actually gonna go into the settings for this one. And this is actually a brand new thing they just added with the most recent update, which is pretty cool. You might see this new security tab. And from here, you can actually add a lock screen, just like a smartphone on your Steam Deck with a password. So if you don't want any, just anybody getting into your Steam Deck and playing it, if you were to lose it or leave it behind, you can do that, which at the moment I don't have it just because it's staying at home. But if I were to go on a vacation or a trip somewhere, I would highly recommend putting a lock screen on your Steam Deck. 
just in case you never know but it's pretty cool that we do have the option to do that now the fourth tip also involves going into the settings and this is a pretty big one that a lot of people seem to like oversight on this you can actually turn off and actually completely customize your notification settings while playing games so if you're new to steam or if you're if you're not really you may or may not know that little badges will pop up on the bottom right of your display while you're playing games showing if friends are online or if they just joined a game or if they sent you a message or if you got an achievement or whatever anything like that of sort and if you're like me they can get kind of annoying so from time to time, I do come in here and completely disable notifications altogether. If I'm playing like a really story based, like heavy story based game where I don't want to get distracted by a random message popping up of someone going online, you can come in here and completely turn them off or on, which is very, very helpful. And going on to the fifth tip, this actually correlates a little bit to the shortcuts I showed earlier. One of the cool shortcuts is if you hold down the menu button over here and use the left analog stick, you can adjust the brightness on the go. So if I hold this down, hit up, as you can see, the brightness goes up and same if I go down. I'm going to leave it at where I was, but you can also go into the settings here and you can change it to an adaptive brightness, which I think is honestly the way you should have it on. So I believe this was off by default. I recommend leaving this on and it has a sensor in the display to show your surroundings or at least see your surroundings and it'll adjust the brightness to what it thinks it would be the best for your viewing pleasure. So if you're in a very dark environment, it'll dim the brightness for you automatically. And if you're outside with glaring light on your display, you're gonna probably want it brighter so it'll automatically put it at full brightness. So again, having the adaptive brightness does help not only for visual fidelity, but also for your battery life. So highly recommend keeping that on. Moving on to the sixth tip. This one is actually super important that a lot of people seem to forget. If you're like me and you have an SD card with your Steam Deck, you're not just using the storage on the device itself. You can actually go into the storage settings and choose which device you would like your games to be installed on or where your favorite place to be would be. So by default, when you plug in an SD card, it actually changes that to your favorite storage medium. So every time you install a new game, it'll go right to your SD card, which is pretty cool. And it does save up a lot of space on your actual SSD built into the device. Now, if you don't want that to be the case, if you want your SD card to be your backup, so to say, you can go in here and click on the internal drive and you can see a little star appear right up there where that will indicate that is your favorite place to send data to. So as you can see, I did set my internal drive to my favorite storage medium because I only have 50 gigs left on my micro SD card and I don't want to fill it up completely. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's pretty cool that they give you the option for that. And this is a cool little trick that not a lot of people talked about. Number seven, and this is another quick little tip that apparently nobody really talks about. And I feel more people should. You can have multiple Steam accounts on one Steam Deck and you can switch between them on the fly. You don't have to log out to log into another one. So if you go and click on your little profile up here and scroll all the way down, you can go to change account. And from here, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to shut down and change accounts? Basically, if you're playing a game, it will shut the game down in order to change accounts, which is fine. So we're going to continue. And on this Steam Deck, me and my wife both use it. So we have both of our Steam accounts on here. And yes, it does also take into account your libraries. So when I log into her Steam account, it actually show all of her Steam games from her Steam library and vice versa if I'm in mine, which is pretty amazing. So you can download a game from someone else's Steam account and play it on the other account. So if I were to go in here and what she already did, she installed Dreamlight Valley on the Steam Deck. But if I were to switch back to my account, I could actually play Streamlight Valley because her account is logged into on the same Steam Deck. So it's basically a really easy way to share libraries with people. And you can do that right on the go, right on the fly without really a hitch. And as you can see, it's pretty quick too. It doesn't take very long to switch between the accounts. It does restart the device to do so. But other than that, it's pretty quick and easy and very painless. So. Good on you, Steam. Moving on to the eighth tip. This is a super important one. If you want to see stats for your games while you're playing them, such as your frames per second. So if you're in a game like Wreckfest, for instance, right here, you can actually click the little menu button on the right. You get this little menu pop out, which from here you get quick access to your brightness, your audio settings, your microphone, Bluetooth, all that fun stuff. 
but if you actually go up or down, you get a few other options. So going up, you can see your friends list, notifications, and then going down, you can see your performance. Now, from just the get-go, this might be a little confusing. It doesn't really give you any clear indication of this is where you can see what's going on in your game. But from right here, the performance overlay level, if you click into this, you can then drag it over to get different amounts of information. Level one, as you can see up in the left corner, is just your frames per second. Level two, you get a little bit more information. You can see your GPU load, your CPU load, your battery life, how much life is left, how much wattage is being used, your drive performance. And then if you go to the right, you get even more and so on and so forth. You can see pretty much every little bit of information you'd ever need to see from a gaming PC while the games are running. This is perfect for benchmarking. And of course, just to make sure your system is running the way it's supposed to. I'm going to leave it just on frames per second so you can get an idea of what it looks like because you can completely exit out of there and it'll stay up on the screen and you can play your game as normal and see your frames. So this is without editing anything running at high specs on on uh, Wreckfest and we get yeah on average maybe 55 frames a second. Not amazing, but it's definitely playable. But what I like to do, and this is going on to my next tip, is if we go back into that same menu, we go over to advanced view, you get a ton of options here to actually manipulate how the game is ran on your Steam Deck to hopefully get better performance. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lower the frame rate. Actually, let's start out with the refresh rate. I'm gonna lower the refresh rate down to 40. You'll see a little flash. And I'm gonna move this down to 40 frames a second with a frame rate limit. This might seem extreme and you're like, man, why are you going that low on your frames? That's gonna look terrible. In my experience though, on this display, 40 frames a second at a 40 refresh rate, honestly feels like 60 frames a second. It really is not that big of a change and it really helps on not only your battery life, but also your performance in general. And you don't really have to mess with anything else here, but the options are here if you'd like to change like your GPU clock control, which is pretty awesome. You can change the megahertz and yada, yada, yada. If you're ever experiencing any issues or hiccups with your game, going in here and changing some of these settings will actually help the performance. So with that, let's exit out of the menu and continue to the game. And you'll see up there in the corner, we're getting a steady 40 now, and this game is running smooth as butter. And for the 10th and final tip, this is pretty important and it's kind of weird that it's not automatic. So that's why I'm giving you guys this tip now. So you don't run into the same issue I did, where if you have an application on the desktop mode, it actually will not update automatically in the background. So what I'm recommending to everybody here is to check or at least switch desktop mode at least once every time you turn on your Steam Deck. The main reason for this is because every time you go into your desktop mode, it automatically will search for updates for any of your applications that you may have within the desktop mode, such as Spotify, Discord, you name it, right? Now, these applications, as stated before, will not update automatically. You have to go to the desktop mode and boom, look at that. Updates are available. So we're going to click on view updates. And from my experience, I get an update almost once a day. They're very, very fast. They, and they they show up all the time so again i recommend i wouldn't say you have to log in here daily but if you use your steam deck daily at least once every time you turn your steam deck on go into the desktop mode just to check for updates to see if any are available you're going to go to update all and just let it do its thing nine times out of ten these are super quick updates that take less than a minute to get done but it's highly recommended you do this because again they will not automatically install without you going to the desktop mode so it's just something that not a lot of people talk about, or I've, at least I've seen, and it's just from my experience. And I hope that in the future, Valve will implement some way of having the desktop mode applications updated from game mode. That would be amazing, but that is pretty much it. So those have been my top tips and tricks for any brand new Steam Deck owner. If there's anything that maybe you're a Steam Deck owner yourself and you're checking out this video and you want to give somebody advice or maybe something I completely missed or if I messed up in this video, let us all know in the comment section below to help anybody out. If you are brand new to the Steam Deck, first of all, welcome to the club. I'm so happy for you. I'm excited to see what you're going to do with it. 
And if there's any ideas you have for future videos or any questions you have for something on the Steam Deck that I did not cover in this video, let me know in the comment section below and I'll hopefully get back to you as soon as I can. Or if I end up making an entire video on it, I will give you a shout out in the next video. So with that, leave a like, share support as always. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out.